Hey all, this is a quick overview of Creosan, something that we've been uh, developing as an open source project uh, recently. Um, this is just an introductory video of kind of its concepts and how we're planning to use it. And I hope you like what you see. So what, first of all, is Creosan? Well, basically it's the core application interface to ProE, uh, Wildfire, and Creo that we've been using commercially for the last 10 years to ship uh, products such as NitroCell, NitroProgram, NitroBomb, and other customer-specific jobs and programs that we've uh, developed over the year. It's written in Java and leverages uh, PTC's JLink functionality. It's simpler and easier to use than Java and JLink. Um, it, but it doesn't require any knowledge of PTC's modeling kernel, which is kind of unique about this. Um, it was built with the goal of just kind of do it. it uh, most applications that we've seen for automation have been focused on kind of replicating what a user does click by click um, using different techniques like uh, recording trail files and map keys and things like that, which you could still do um, with Creosan and Leverage to a certain degree. But uh, we're more focused on just trying to tell Creo to do something. Uh, so that's one big difference. It is language agnostic, meaning you can use whatever language you want, even a scripting language. Uh, we provide it as an MIT license, so it's as is. There's no warranty or obligations. Uh, just don't remove the copyright and attribution. Um, show us a little bit of love, please. And use and include it and bundle it and distribute it freely and have fun because it is very cool. A typical Creo automation uh, basically looks like this. So on your computer, you have Creo, and then you typically have your installed application uh, to connect and automate Creo. And they're typically bound together. So when you start up Creo, your application starts, or it's, it's a standalone thing that has to communicate exclusively with it on the local computer. The current tech, technologies and options that are used out there to create applications uh, to the Creo parametric modeling kernel are, are really across two different interfaces mainly these days. Uh, Pro Toolkit, which is the old interface that's gonna be replaced by Object Toolkit. And then there's a whole host of other interfaces kind of that sit on top of those. Uh, and then you have your technical stack of how you wanna communicate with those using the various approaches. So whether it's C or JavaScript, Visual Basic or Java, um, it's kind of up to you to choose which way you wanna go. And then of course there's different levels of capability uh, depending on which path you choose. So regardless of which way you go, basically there's a bi-directional communication that's occurring between the modeling kernel and your application to kind of get the results. So this uh, creates a little bit of a barrier for most people. Uh, the biggest barrier is I know what I want to do, uh, but I don't have the skills necessarily to kind of really dig into that. So that also presented a problem for us with the Creosun interface. And that came down to like, well, how much is really required? Do we need everything or do we just want to focus on the stuff that really works? So that's where we've paced, put a lot of our energy and is just trying to focus on what is really required. So the focus for us has been more on functional um, interfaces and capabilities rather than every little detail. So we've chosen JLink as the primary interface uh, that we've used for years. It works, it's very, uh, very well, it has a lot of coverage, but it's not everything. And then uh, within Creosan, uh, because we're using a JSON interface to kind of do all of the interactions, we don't really care what technology is used. Um, so if you're, if you're a Python person or a Ruby person or a PHP or just a JavaScript, or if you want to stick with Visual Basic and Java, there's typically an interface to be able to do this with um, uh, JSON. You just have to figure it out. So uh, the same interface is used for all languages and uh, it's a much more streamlined process uh, because you don't have to really dig into the kernel. So the core philosophy of how we do this is this. So you have your Creo installation and then you have this Creosan HTTP microserver. HTTP is the same thing that web pages use uh, to request things, so it's a web server. And then once this starts, it connects to Creo and then just basically allows you to go back and forth with the Creo API requests uh, using JLink. And you can launch that server from a simple batch file after it's configured uh, and localized to the machine where Creo's at. Once you have uh, those required components in place, uh, when you develop your application or your script that you want to run, uh, basically that server is just gonna sit there and listen for calls. And the way you send information back and forth to it is just through a structured text file called the JSON file uh, over the HTTP protocol, which is uh, like a web request. So if you wanted to load a web page with an application, it's the same kind of concept. 
once you've got that working, it really it allows you to kind of do whatever you want. So we've simplified the interface to Creo to do what it needs to do. Um, so if you want to interface it with databases or office applications like Excel or Word or, or, uh, or other application services that you might have within your company, it's very easy to do uh, because now you're not so much focused on the extreme details of how to interface with Creo. It becomes more of a, a glued interface to other systems quite easily. To give you an example of how this works, uh, I want to reiterate here that we focused primarily on the simple functional requests, meaning you do not need to understand the PTC modeling kernel to really use it. Um, all of the transactions are JSON data. They're structured text for both requests and responses, and they kind of look like this. So in this example here, to open a file, you'll see that we have a command called file, a function called open, and then the data that we're sending is the name of the file we want to open, we want to activate it and we want it to display the file when it's there. When that runs, it's going to return um, a response that's going to say, okay, I opened uh, a file or files. If you put a wildcard in, it'll open multiple matches. It's going to show you the directory where they're located. And if it's a single file like this one is, it's going to show you the revision of that file that it opened. So the big question that then comes up is, okay, well, how do I actually make that thing? Well, it's actually quite easy. This depends on the software technology you choose. Um, so you just have to research what, you know, if you choose JavaScript, how do I do JSON requests with JavaScript? If you want to choose uh, a language like Visual Basic or if you want to use PHP, again, same question. How do I do JSON requests uh, back and forth with it? Once you get that working, the magic starts happening and it starts to get really comfortable really fast. The deployment of uh, a Creosan a uh, little HTTP server and application is really flexible. Um, so you can actually take the minimum requirements that we have for Creo and the uh, microserver that connects to it. And then it's just a question of where do you want your application or script to run from? Do you want it to run on a local machine or do you want it to run on a remote machine? Again, everything happens with JSON requests. The beauty about this is that you can run it locally uh, um, or you can run it over a network or on the same machine if you want to. So what we're asking for uh, from the community is if you want to help us uh, kind of um, build, test, and, uh, and play with this, uh, please reach out to us. Just send us an email at support at simplifiedlogic.com and make sure the subject is Creosan, and uh, we'll start uh, the conversation. Thanks.